everyone. Welcome. Hello, Delhi, and hello, Tomorrow's India. My name is Tanmay Bakshi, and my passion is to explore machine learning technology. The reason I'm so passionate about machine learning technology is because it lets us take what computers are so good at, which is processing mathematical operations, and what we as humans are so good at, which is understanding and working with unstructured data, and combine them to get the best of both worlds, so we can understand unstructured data at scale through the machines we're already using in our everyday lives. But before I get deeper into that technology and what it's doing, I'd like to start off by saying a huge thank you to the entire team here at Tomorrow's India Global Summit for putting together such an, in such an inspiring and such an exciting event. I'm really honored to be here today, uh, and this is really, really exciting. Now, as I mentioned, the reason I'm here today is because I'm really passionate about machine learning technology. In fact, as we speak, machine learning technology is impacting hundreds of fields and hundreds of thousands of lives across the globe. You've all used this technology today without even realizing it. Maybe you'll go home tonight and watch a movie on Netflix. You're using machine learning because Netflix is understanding the kinds of content that you like to watch. Maybe you're shopping on Amazon and it recommends a product that you never knew you needed, but apparently you do. Or maybe you're browsing Facebook where someone sends you a message on WhatsApp. And Facebook is actually now using machine learning technology to do fact checking in order to battle fake news. In fact, that's something that would personally be very useful to me because a lot of people have been taking clips of my interviews and sending them around WhatsApp saying that I work for Google. But rest assured, I don't work for Google. That's only fake news. And now thanks to machine learning, we can finally clarify that misconception. But out of all the different things that machine learning is doing, the one field that I'm most passionate about applying it in is the field of healthcare, which is why I'm working on numerous different projects in this field, including a project that lets me diagnose depression at a much earlier stage by actually tracking a lot of the different data that people generate on their mobile devices every single day. I'm also working towards an application that lets me provide a kind of artificial community communication ability to those who cannot communicate naturally or those who have lost their natural communication ability. I'm also working towards an app that can actually provide an audiologist a cognitive or an intelligent tool that lets them diagnose hearing disorders in much faster and much more accurate ways than they ever could have done before. And a project that enables clinical researchers to predict adverse events that people may experience to drugs even before they actually take the drug. And even if that specific patient demographic and that specific drug have never been tested before in a clinical trial. This is, these, are just, these are just a few, of a few of the examples of how I'm implementing machine learning technology in the field of healthcare. But before I get even deeper into what I'm doing with machine learning technology today, I think it would be interesting to start off at the very beginning. How I actually got into technology in the first place. But to do that though, we'd have to travel back in time by around nine years to when I was five years old. You see, when I was five years old, my dad used to work as a computer programmer. And as you can imagine, as the curious five-year-old I was trying to absorb as much knowledge as I could, what would really intrigue me were computers. And the reason for that was because, well, as you can imagine, watching my dad program almost all day would be like magic to me. I wanted to figure out how the computer could do pretty much anything, whether it be displaying my name on the screen, adding two numbers, or doing practically anything else. And my dad saw that curiosity that I had and introduced me to the world of programming when I was five years old. My first few applications were in simple languages like Fox Pro and Batch, but my curiosity really only grew from there. In fact, when I was nine years old, I had my very first iOS application, T-Tables, accepted into the Apple App Store. It's an application that lets you learn your times tables. But around this time, when my parents really started to see the sort of passion that I had for technology, they decided to homeschool me so I could truly focus on what I'm passionate about 
and what I love to do. In fact, I always urge parents and really families across the globe and also especially here in India to really focus and allow their, ch their children to figure out what they're passionate about and nurture that passion so they can go ahead and later in life do what they want to do, not what someone else wants them to do, so that they can do what they are truly passionate about and what they feel they would be most interested in. Then, at 10 years old, I started my YouTube channel called Tanmay Teaches. On this YouTube channel, I upload videos, uh, basically tutorials, on tons of different topics, like iOS app development, math, science, and of course, programming and algorithms. Now, this YouTube channel made me realize something. It made me realize that there is a lack of resources out there. There is a lack of resources for the kids and the beginners that want to get into technology. There's a very steep learning curve that people have to get past if they want to start to learn how to use programming and how to use technology to their advantage. And so that's why I started my goal, to help and reach out to at least 100,000 aspiring coders to help them innovate along their journey of learning to code. I'm really glad to say that I'm already around 8,800 people there, and I'm always working towards this goal through numerous different media, like my YouTube channel, the books that I author, the blogs that I write, and of course, the talks and workshops that I conduct at schools, universities across the globe, and keynotes that I have at conferences just like this one today. In fact, just two days ago, I had the lucky opportunity to actually go to two different schools and universities here in Delhi uh, and it was a great experience talking to the students and taking whatever I learned about machine learning technology and letting them use that as well. Letting them implement machine learning in the fields where they believe it can make the most impact. Because machine learning technology is powerful, but it's important that we have the people that know how to communicate with that technology. It's important we have the people that know how to talk its own language. But. Around this time, even though I was working towards this goal to reach out to 100,000 aspiring beginners, even though I had that goal, I always felt like something was missing in technology. I always felt like there's an extra step that's just not there right now because technology is very rigid. It's very literal. You code something in and it immediately starts becoming obsolete. It never changes, it never adapts to new data or new users that are using your applications. And so I slowly started to lose my passion for technology. I slowly started to lose the faith that I had in technology. But when I was 11 years old, back in 2015, something happened one day. By complete coincidence, I stumbled upon a documentary. Not just any documentary, but a documentary of IBM Watson playing and winning the Jeopardy game show back in 2011 against the two best human competitors on that game show, Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter. If you've seen the Jeopardy game show before, you know why this is such a huge feat for a computer to accomplish. Jeopardy clues are natural language that are filled with puns, riddles, and wordplay. Even the average Jeopardy clue on screen right now is something that an expert Jeopardy player would have a hard time understanding. But seven years ago, back in 2011, IBM Watson was not only able to understand complex Jeopardy clues, IBM Watson was able to correlate them with four terabytes of unstructured natural language information that Watson had stored locally on its drives. And Watson was therefore able to answer Jeopardy clues. In fact, for the clue I had just shown you on screen right now, Watson actually answered in a real game against Ken and Brad, who is D'Artagnan? And the best part, Watson did this in under three seconds. Watson did this in 2.6 seconds, to be precise. Immediately, I was passionate about machine learning technology. And I created my very first few tutorials on using machine learning and IBM Watson and uploaded them to my YouTube channel. In fact, machine learning really made me realize the importance of technology and the crucial role that it plays in every one of our lives. In fact, Mark Anderson says that in the future, there are only going to be two types of jobs in the first place those in which humans tell computers what to do, and those in which computers 
tell humans what to do. And so if we want our youth to be on the other end of the spectrum, telling the computers what to do instead of the other way around, we need to make sure that they are future-proofed. We need to make sure that they are ready for the future in which technology will have to communicate with them and they will have to communicate with technology. They need to speak the computer's language so they can tell it what to do. But I also know that today, I've been using a lot of different terminology. I've been using the word machine learning, IBM Watson, AI, artificial intelligence, but what does it all really mean? More specifically, what is machine learning technology? And well, at first glance, machine learning technology seems really complex. But when you boil away all the excess and you just take a look at the core essence of what machine learning technology is, you'll see that it's actually a lot simpler than you may have thought. It's just a set of operations that you can use to build a model that can understand unstructured data, natural language data, visual data, auditory data, that we as humans have the innate ability to understand, but computers are simply incapable of processing, allowing computers to essentially understand data that we as humans have created to express ourselves and understand the world around us. But in that case, what's artificial intelligence? What's AI, as a lot of people like to call it? Is it the same thing? Is it a synonym? And well, I'm sorry to break it to you, but no. AI and machine learning are definitely not the same thing. They are very, very different. Artificial intelligence is all about taking the human mind and simulating it within a computer entirely. But no matter how many times you've heard the word AI or artificial intelligence, I'm sorry, but it simply doesn't exist. AI is not a thing right now because it's simply impossible to recreate human organic intelligence within a computer due to the very bare bone way we compute. Rather, there are two different sets of algorithms, rule-based and machine learning systems. A lot of people like to call these algorithms AI. But again, they are not artificial intelligence algorithms. Rather, they're meant to work towards building artificial intelligence. But whether or not we will ever get there is up to huge debate. I personally believe that we will never reach there. It's not just a matter of computing power, it's a matter of the way we compute. Computers are essentially really precise, really fast, and really flexible calculators that can do a very, very broad array of operations. But you wouldn't be scared of a calculator, would you? And so, I'm sure you've heard a lot of different quotes, like for example, Stephen Hawking saying, the development of full AI could spell the end of the human race. And Elon Musk saying, with artificial intelligence, we're summoning the demon. And they're right. In fact, I couldn't agree more. But what you have to realize is that not a single one of these quotes uses the word machine learning. They all use the term artificial intelligence. And AI doesn't exist. It's a very bare bone limitation of the way our computers operate. Rather, machine learning is about taking what we as humans can do, reason and understand unstructured data, and what computers can do, which is process large amounts of data really, really quickly, and combine them so we can use both of those capabilities to their absolute full advantage. And so that is the truth behind machine learning technology. But out of all the different fields that machine learning is impacting, as I mentioned, there's one that I am most passionate about applying, and that is the field of healthcare. And so out of all the different projects that I'm working on in the field of healthcare, there's just one that I'd love to share with you today. More specifically, it's in the field of mental health. And the entire point of this project is to create an early warning system so I can actually prevent depression. And in the meanwhile, as I'm preventing depression, I can also avert suicide by playing a more active role in detecting depression in the first place. Stopping suicide by stopping depression even before it evolves into anything serious. And it uses machine learning technology to track a lot of the different data you're generating every single day without even realizing it. And the best part is that your privacy is never 
violated. Your privacy remains intact because all of your data is stored completely locally. It's all encrypted and stored within an iOS application sandbox. And it's never shared with anyone or even sent to a cloud for processing. The inspiration for this project actually came from a few different startling statistics that we found. Like, for example, did you know in Australia alone, that's just one country, over 40% of all the calls that come into the 1-800 Kids Helplines for Mental Health aren't even answered. That is a huge number of people that aren't getting the help that they need just because there aren't enough staff to answer their calls. And in the U.S., over 80% of all the teens that do end up committing suicide give off clear warning signs, or patterns, if you will, before it actually happens. But the problem is that we as humans cannot detect such subtle patterns. We as humans cannot go through such vast amounts of data to find those patterns. And that's why machine learning technology is important here. And I'm also not limiting this just to the youth demographic. I'm expanding it to a lot more. In fact, to introduce the next demographic that I'm working with, I'd like to show you all a quick clip from my mentor, James Archieri, who's also a collaborator on the project. James. Hey guys, James Michael Archieri. I'm a colleague of Tammy's working on the suicide prevention application. Now you know we're trying to tackle teen suicide, but did you know we're also now going to be tackling veteran suicide? Reason being, 22 veterans a day take their own life. And that's very special and important to me because one of my dear loved ones that is a veteran recently tried to take their life. And then when we tried to call and get her the help with the institutions that are supposed to be there for her, they tell you to hang up, it's a mental health emergency, and call 911, or leave a voicemail and someone will get back to you. That is a broken system. Leave a voicemail? That's not okay. And why we're trying to help these people, we're going to connect them, make them feel that they're not alone anymore. So please follow us, support us, and Tanmay, please take it away. Thank you. That's right. The next demographic that we're working with on this project is the veteran demographic. More specifically, with a partner of ours in the U.S. called Objective Zero. We're expanding this to the veteran demographic as well as, of course, the youth demographic. And so that is just one of my projects in the field of healthcare that leverages the power of machine learning technology. Machine learning has the capability to save, augment, impact quite literally millions of lives across the globe every single day. And this technology is not just the future, it's the present. We're using it every single day without realizing it. It's not just limited to the far future, it's being used today. It's saving people's lives today. Which is why we also shouldn't be afraid of this technology. We shouldn't be afraid of AI. Because it's not meant to replace us. It's not meant to harm us. It's meant to help us. The only reason we're afraid of it is because we have this kind of subconscious perception of technology that's completely skewed. It's actually been proven by brain scans before that your brain treats a computer or any technology just like another living entity. Your brains are quite literally hardwired to think artificial intelligence is bad. And then, of course, to add on top of that all the different movies and literature that add to the bias and tell your brain to be afraid of artificial intelligence. They're just movies. And in fact, AI is not artificial intelligence. Rather, AI is augmented intelligence because that's what it's all about. It's about taking what we as humans can do we are intelligent, we can reason, we can understand unstructured data. And taking what computers are so good at, which is processing vast amounts of data, and combining them so that we can use our intelligence capabilities to the absolute full extent. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining in today. That's what I had for my keynote. If you'd like to, thank you.